head chronicler Matias, of the Delver Association expedition to the Western Swamplands, recording made with an area recaster version 2.4. Introductions generated by the recaster, crew load out. Expedition team leader, Delver and the Demon Sinquad, 10 years experience as a Delver, specialty scout, 5 years as team leader, 3 years training in Daenerith. Veteran scout, Lauren Silverbeard, 5 years full scout, 3 years training in Daenerith. Novice Scout, Dashlin, Dash, Featherfoot, three years training in Daenerith. Veteran Utilist, Salish Fadarin Thura, Salish for short, five years full Utilist, three years training in Verdon. Veteran Squib Keeper, Dobson Mellon FAS Ari though, three years full Squib Keeper, two years full Scout, three years training in Falden. Veteran Iron Cast, Donal, three years full Iron Cast, three years training in Hive 132A. Veteran Slasher, Brita of Nomadic Tribe Gortusk, two years full Slasher, ten years training in the Razor Plains. Total equipment list, included below in the written record sheet. Swamp Expedition Report Day 27, last day of expedition before cancellation and return to Daenerith. Recaster description of logs are as follows with inserts of Delvalin's personal thoughts. The storms have been tracked at a regular interval, every three days. They consist of high winds, six hours of rain then a steady allotment of lightning strikes. The strikes are attracted to the larger pools of water between the hills of the swamp. The hills are large mounds of dirt and moss, that soak up water and dry within moments. Primary dangers of the current area are the high winds, that can knock a traveler off their feet into the pools. The rain is not heavy enough to pose danger, but the subsequent lightning strikes require positioning atop the hill's apex to lessen the likelihood of electrocution. While the team was traversing an area sparse with hills, only one within 300 feet Delvalin noticed the door built into the side of it and called for an immediate stop. Hold up, I see a structure. Lauren get the trigger, Dobson prep a squib. Lauren removed a mechanical device called a trigger from their bag as Dobson began playing a small flute to a small fungal creature. On Delvalin's signal, Lauren activated the trigger, it whirred to life, extending out two wands emitting flashes of light, a propeller extended from the top, spinning and carrying the device into the air. It sped rapidly towards the hill clanking with random noises, sending out the occasional spurt of flame. Then suddenly it retracted all protrusions, and slammed hard into the soft mushy ground. The team waited a moment before Delvalin signaled again. Dobson fluted at the squib, which started working its slow waddling way towards where the trigger slammed down. When it reached the trigger, it fluted back impatiently to Dobson. After a full minute, Delvalin signaled to advance in silence, Lauren retrieved, refueled and reset the trigger. Dobson, fed the squib a small nut. They repeated this process until they reached the hill with the door. Delvalin, Lauren and Dash inspected the hill and door carefully. Then Delvalin asked. Salish, spark the door. Salish held out one of her long slender hands, uttered a simple chant and then the world to Salish's eyes became alive with light, revealing the various hues of magic that surrounded the team. Anything? The door has no signs of enchantment, though the whole area is radiating with hues of conjuration. Dangerous hues? If they were we would know by now. Keep it up, for as long as you can and notify me of any change no matter how small. Right demon. Lauren what do you think? We are at the halfway point on rations. We have enough data to complete our contract. If we do a cursory examination of this door we will probably earn a bonus, even without opening it. If we open it and don't die, whatever details we get, means a big bonus. So whatever you decide we gotta do it now. Lauren prefers to give their two creds then let everyone else decide. Right, let's hear it, everyone gets a vote on my team. Short examination before we turn back or open the door and earn ourselves a big bonus. I'm in for opening the door. Dobson punched Dash's shoulder playfully before giving his own nod of agreement to that. Dobson lost his son in a fire a few years back when we brought on young Dash. He immediately took the halfle under his wing, probably trying to get him to become a squib keeper. Let's open it. Open the door. 
Salish and Bruta have gambling debts back in Daenerith. Donal just likes money. Money. Once everyone had given their agreements, Delvalin had them space out. Salish breathed out a shield for Delvalin, and then he opened the door. His immediate jump back showed his full expectation of something destroying the area in front of the doorway but nothing occurred. Beyond the doorway, was a set of winding stone stairs leading downward, into the dark. The stones were interlinked granite slabs, dry despite the previous rainfall. Similar to other facilities in the region. Only seven steps were visible before the stairway vanished behind the curve. Delvalin signaled to Dobson to send a squib through the doorway. Dobson fluted to their squib, that trundled toward and then with a little huff that seemed to convey, oh great, steps as big as me. It began to carefully make its way down the steps. When it went out of view around the bend, it began fluting excitedly, which prompted the other squibs to do the same in clear jealousy. What's up with it? They only make that noise when they find food. By the sounds they found a lot of food. Dash, what do you think? As a scout in training? I could go down a bit and take a look. Novice scouts are always trying to prove they have what it takes to do this job. To be a legendary delver. It may be callous, but that's why I liked having at least one on my team. They don't know enough to be afraid of things like this. Having one always leaves the chance for a big bonus or a body bag. Dobson, get the squib back up here first and then we will see about Dash going down a bit. If the squib found food it's not coming up, no amount of nuts is going to get it away from food right in front of it. I got this demon it's just, what, seven steps or so. Okay, but keep your climbing gear handy. Bruta spiked the door, I don't want it closing. Dorlin get a rope ready. Delvalin turned his back as the crew started to get into position. Dash rolled his eyes and immediately began down the steps, with a yelp from Lauren. This caused everyone to turn. Dash, get back here right now. Oh come on it's just some stairs. Dash, I said get up here. Holy shit, there is a whole bunch of bushes down here with berries on it. The little dude is chowing down. Get up here. Right now. Or you don't get your part of the bonus. But Demon, the folks back home could really use something like this if it doesn't kill the squib. They are growing in the dark, how do they do that? You guys gotta come down here. We will figure out the berry bushes after you get up here. Okay okay, I will be right up. Oh shit, ow that I fell on my leg, the stones gave way, shit it's bad. Can you make it up the stairs a bit? Ow, no can't do it, I'm hurt really bad here Delvalin, I think I need help down here. We will toss you down a rope. I need someone to come down and get me. Lauren, go down but stay in sight. Right demon. Lauren proceeded cautiously down the steps choosing to remain one foot on the sixth and seventh step. Tell me what you can see. The steps continue down, I don't see Dash or the squib. I don't like this Dash. I'm just round the next bend, it bottoms out into a round chamber. What do you want to do now demon? Come down. We'll throw you a rope and pull you up. Okay demon, you know best. I like to be prepared for trouble, most teams only have a trigger or squibs not both. Most teams prepare for cold weather or wet weather, not both. Most teams have rope but not climbing axes or pitons. It's a lot of extra weight to carry but I can't count how often something I packed when the report said we wouldn't need it, turned out to be just what we needed. The team moved into action, they collected a rope and Delvlin outlined what the plan was. Salish would cast detection on Lauren to watch for danger, Delvlin, Bruta and Dorlin would form a line just outside the door to haul Dash, they would have Lauren make the toss down to Dash, Dobson would secure the line. Everyone was in position, Delvalin at the doorway, nodded down to Lauren, who then threw the rope. There was a sudden scream from Dash. The rope went taunt, Lauren was yanked off of his perch. Delvalin, Bruta and Dorlin were pulled off their feet by a great force. Then the rope continued down the stairs, Dobson went sailing by, screaming as they had secured the rope to their own belt. There was silence, then a huff and groan could be heard from the stairway. Demon! I'm alright I got my axe wedged. The floor gave out, I can hear Dash down at the other end. He's still holding on. Lauren fell. Oh great tender they fell. 
Hold on dog. Hold on. I'm trying but it could go any second. Dorlin get another rope everyone get ready. When you are doing this job long enough, you learn to trust your instincts, not the ones you are born with. No, the ones you develop with the understanding that out here you are prey and just about everything wants to eat you. It's the hairs on the back of your neck rising all at once for no reason other than the primal knowledge that something hungry has you in its sights. That's what I had in this moment. Something was here and it wanted to eat me and my crew. Dob, I need you to describe what's down there. My prey instincts were screaming at me. Something was very wrong. It wasn't just bad luck and crumbling facilities. These things were made to withstand attacks from gods. The floor is gone. It gave way to a large chamber. There are mechanical devices I can see in the dim light. Some kind of forge. It is lit and working. There are vehicles, like the ones the Delvers of Falden found under their city. Delvalin shut the door as Dobson was talking and then immediately opened it. I couldn't tell you why I did it right then. The part of my brain that was thinking was going through the steps to haul my team back up. The prey part that was screaming wrong. Wrong. Danger. Danger. Moved my hand. Silence, no shouts or screams of alarm from falling, no Dobson continuing to talk. Nothing. Hold up everyone, pack up. Lauren, Dobson and Dash are dead. We're getting out of here. Whatever is down there. We will let the research team take care of it. Delvalin's team made it back to Daenerith safely with no more casualties. They got their big bonus and additionals for the information about the, what they described as the hovel. A squat hill with a door and death beyond. The following are the final thoughts of Delvalin on the matter. I have turned the moments of Dash, Dobson and Lauren's deaths over and over in my mind. Since we opened that door. I even went to a shaman to walk through those moments again and again. I finally found the reason I shut the door. It was the screams of Dash and Lauren. We heard it Dash first and then Lauren, but it was the other way around. A fraction of an instant Lauren began to scream first. Right when they had tossed the rope towards where Dash was supposed to be. Lauren's hand went out of view, then they screamed, then what was pretending to be Dash screamed to cover it up. Thus ends the records of the expedition to the Western Swamplands, and discovery of the hovel. A research and engineering team has been dispatched to both research the hovel and set up a system to harvest the lightning bolts. This is Head Chronicler Matias of the Delver Association signing off. Hey, thanks for watching. And please like and if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. And uh, do the little bell and tell the people about me. And, you know, just... Have a good day, you know? See you!